board meeting together for Monday, January 13th. Uh, Trish, will you call the roll? Fitzgerald? Here. Karens? Here. Kogaleski? Here. Michelson? Here. Miller? Here. Rule? Wilson? Bowler? Okay, now if I remember how to do this, uh, approval of the minutes from October 14th, 2013 minutes. Uh, any additions or corrections? Being none, need a motion to approve. Motion. Jim? Second. Uh, Vic, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you very much. All right, on our agenda tonight is the mm -hmm. South Park. Uh, discuss the South Park master plan, update the 2014 budget, and update on uh, 2014 capital improvement plan. So we'll start with the uh, South Park master plan. Thanks, Bill. Um, we have Jeff following from Rettler Corporation here this evening, um, following the, the public input that has taken place, as well as meeting with our park staff and uh, the last park board meeting. Jeff has put together two concept plans for South Park, and what he'll do is walk through each of those. Our hope from tonight is that if we can try to um, narrow it down into a preferred concept plan, um, or if we need more time to get some information from Jeff and have him come back with another um, one or two options, that might be an op uh, a possibility as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Jeff and, and take it away. Okay, thanks for having me. Uh, Happy New Year. It's been a while since we've been together. Um, remember, every master plan process starts with looking at the existing conditions and gathering the needs. And um, back in September, we had uh, meetings with the staff, um, the operational staff and uh, raised staff, as well as we had a public meeting, uh, 638 o'clock on September 30th. Uh, there were a lot of different inputs. Uh, we also received input from um, nine user groups, uh, the Labor Council, VFW, uh, the Park Dance, Winnebago Barbershoppers, Fine Arts Association, Gray Beards, Thursday Night Horseshoe League, uh, Humane Society, and Arts for Kids. Um, so we got a lot of good information. Really, there were some major goals that came out of all that stuff for South Park. Um, the new large inclusive playground will now be located in South Park. There are stormwater issues out there. Um, there are improvements that need to be made, both for water quality and water quantity. Um, as um, is also recognized in the comp plan that we did, restrooms and shelters need updating, and this park's no different than that. Um, the ash tree plan uh, for emerald, emerald ash borer will be one of the items there. The park trails are getting older and they need improvements. There's quite a bit of erosion along the lagoons and the lagoons are a very important part of this park. It was um, general consensus that we keep the lagoons as long as the park is a park. It's a major asset of the park, but we need to fix the erosion and the stormwater for those and potentially the source of water. Uh, additional parking, if we're going to be adding the inclusive playground, as well as redeveloping the park, we should look at additional parking spots. Uh, the one-way loop around the park was to be maintained. There was some discussions of having a longer drive and um, other things like that, but really this main loop seems to work, and everybody liked that. We're going to keep the horseshoe pits. We're going to keep the tennis courts and all the concepts. We're going to put in dollars in the master plan to rehab them, uh, resurface, new fence, things like that. Uh, same with the um, horseshoe pits. We'll look at some improvements there. A fence along the north property line, um, that was going to be in all the plans as well. So, again, we had some pretty good input. We had a list of uh, things on our shopping list to create some concepts. Now, there's going to be a lot of information here, so... Um, I'm not quite sure how we should do it. I, I can just go through both plans and then come back with questions at the end. And I'll try to make it as um, concise and quick as possible. But if someone gets confused, just slow me down and we'll go from there, okay? So we have two concepts. This is concept one that's up here. And I believe you guys have them in your packet as well. Um, starting in the upper left corner, do you need some extra ones? 
Sean, Sean needs one. One more. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll share with Bill. Thank you. No, no, no worries. <laughs> uh, concept one um, up in the northwest corner. This is really an underutilized part of the park. In this concept, we show getting rid of the existing um, basketball court and moving it up here and actually adding another one. I know they are um, popular, and we thought maybe a hard court area in this corner would be a nice use, as well as a new open shelter building and a, a small parking lot. So kind of a neat part of the park, as well as adding additional trees to create a nice part of the uh, park there. Um, we're upgrading the horseshoe pits to, to be determined. Um, we're going to look at 67 <laughs> new parking spots here. And also we're going to look at a new loop system of 16 parking spots in this location. So currently there's, 30, there's um, 51 parking spots in this area. As is proposed, there's 125. Okay, so we put a large parking lot along Georgia. We're proposing to renovate the shelter. We have the 16 space with a nice drop-off for the inclusive playground in this location. We've kept the existing play equipment, but between it, it was kind of neat. We created some shade shelters because lots of often kids um, with disabilities um, are in medicine. They need to be out of the sun as well as just normal park users could use these shade shelters as a transition between the existing playground and the new playground. So this big circle is the universal playground and there's the existing. We're also showing um, a new shelter restroom building in this corner here, pretty close to the one that's there now. Um, and we're also showing additional parking spots right here on the curve. So really you'll be able to park in four different locations to really get into this active space here. All right. I think everybody knows what the universal playground is. It's the uh, accessible playground with, um, with the port and play surfacing and the group's been raising money on that. And I forgot where it was proposed before, Ray, but now it's coming to a Brockland Park. Now it's coming over to here. So that one works pretty nice. <coughs> and that isn't that, that isn't proposed to replace the, that existing equipment that's there on the south end. Of the, that, that, that's going to remain. That's correct. Correct. And actually, in this one, we kept the splash pad the same size that it is now. There are some tan lines you can see. Those will be future pathways or accessible walkways. We're just not drawing the. We want to make sure we get the concept figured out first so but that would be additional um, walkways as far as the lagoon improvements um, we got a, we actually have a, a sheet or a plan of that and I can show you that at the end but we're looking at stabilizing the shoreline along the entire lagoon area uh, we actually want to look at maybe some overlooks or places to stand or sit or fish along the edges of the lagoon we also want to dredge the lagoon and create uh, landscaping along the edges, either naturalized and or um, natural, um, regular bluegrass turf the way it is now. And then we also maybe are looking at providing um, opportunities for some sort of fountain or aeration to keep the water quality better. Right now we know that there's a quarry that's feeding it with nice cold water, so that's why the water quality is pretty good. If we turn it into more of a stormwater pond in the future, we'll have to look at other methods. And deepening the water and adding this aeration would really be two good practices. Jeff, how deep are you talking about? Um, ultimately, it would be nice to get to 10 feet, but I think we're talking more like 6 to 7 feet deep. Right now, there are only three. Um, the deeper we can get, the less um, plants would grow. And, um, and uh, we're going to talk about the stormwater. There's a whole board on it. I could either get to that now or at the end. I, uh, I, I didn't want yeah. I just curious. So yeah. Okay. Um, one of the other things that's kind of cool is the bridge down there, guys. And um, I thought maybe on this side of the of the um, bridge there could be some sort of um, dedication, 
seating area, brick area, stone area that could talk about the bridge and how neat it is and how when it was put in and just kind of highlight that bridge because it is, it is a neat structure of the park. We're also looking perhaps on these um, transition zones of adding some uh, larger boulders or stepping stones through there, something that could be interacting, but uh, there are some problems with that, of collecting debris and that sort of thing. So that's a concept that's out there right now. We actually expanded the lagoon down on the south on this uh, option. We did maintain the shelter three no down there and added a parking lot along Ohio. Now, Ray, I don't know, if did you check any more into that, um, if, if we can do that? We are continuing to check. Um, at this point, we're going to leave it in, and I'm hoping to have an answer um, by our okay. next meeting. I have not received, received a final yeah. answer at this point. We thought if we could squeeze a one-way loop parking lot in there, we could really get people to utilize the shelter, and it would be a nice access right to that area of the park. Because at this point, there's really nothing, nowhere to park on that end which makes it nice in some ways, but this is tucked right along that edge as well. Would uh, would one possibility, yeah, with the access out of that pretty close to the intersection, I suppose that's maybe the potential. Yeah, sure, um, yeah. Yeah, well, one maybe potential would be one way in, one way out, you know, and then you'd have to just you'd use, lose a little of the green space there, but... It, it would take it away from the uh, intersection a little bit, yep. you know, and maybe potentially if that was still allowable, having that, and that's that's, a, that's not any farther than a lot of the neighbors' driveways, so potentially that if that was acceptable to the different areas of, of, of the city, uh, that, that maybe would be a possibility. Okay. How many parking stalls are there? 17? Yeah, 17 proposed. Remember, we spent a lot of time at Menominee trying to be fun and fancy on the corners of the parks. We'd still like to promote some symmetry and some some type of park vernacular for South Park. You have a lot of different things going on there. It would be nice to create one sort of theme and start to reiterate that in the signage and the intersection. So there's a lot of good things about it now. We just think it can be improved upon. We don't have any specifics, but we're just saying those are areas that we should look at to improve. Um, obviously, the shared use paths we're looking at, energy efficient lighting throughout we're looking at. Um, we'll talk more once we become, once we start to really know where the parking lots are and where all these trails are going to be. How much do we light? Do we light just the parking lots? Do we light the main trail? Do we light all the trails? So uh, LEDs coming a long way, and um, uh, the park has um, Scooter, I believe, as their electrician, and they've been coming a long way with... Um, <laughs> putting these new fixtures in. So we just want to make sure we don't forget about that. Any questions on on this concept? The, the, the boulders uh, in the waterway there, I, 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 I like those. I think they're neat. Are, are there... Are there liabilities, though, that come with something like that? And are there other communities that, that you can think of that you've worked with that have done something similar to this? I, I just see it being a easily, you know, people jumping on there, falling in the water, getting caught up. Uh. We've done it uh, before, uh, more so in a planting area versus water. However, I grew up on Lake Michigan down in the Milwaukee area, and I often, um, on some of the channels, we used to do some of that uh, rock hopping as a kid, and that's kind of why I threw that in there. But Ray and his staff kind of reminded me, hey, Jeff, a lot of debris gets caught on those, and it's a lot of work to clean them up. So... He wasn't overly uh, thrilled with that idea. But um, the fun part of the kid part would be great. The cleaning up of it's another thing. So it's not totally thought through, but it's an idea. We also want to as well. And once we get into stormwater, I'll tell you what the those are. If we can narrow them up and maybe store more water within the site, it might help the overall stormwater of the uh, area. And just one other question I had, it, it, and both of these plans, but uh, and this one in particular, there, there's no changes proposed to the, the bridges uh, themselves, the pedestrian bridges that, that, that go? Uh... No, not at this point. Okay, great. Um, concept plan number two. Uh, hold, on, hold on a little okay. bit, Jeff. Okay, all right. Uh, looking at one, I was hoping there'd be some, some people from the neighborhood here tonight to 
to give us some input on both of these, but seeing none. Uh, the shelter to the east, uh, one way down where we put the parking lot, that addresses one of the issues. The other issue was a restroom, and we didn't address that because... You mean down on that side of the park? Down on that side of the park. Correct. We just had the one uh, restroom here, as well as we added a restroom in the middle of the park um, right there. In the middle of the play area, the, yeah. The yeah, but we, you're right. We didn't address. Um, I guess if we could have a parking lot on, it was always kind of uh, iffy about this parking lot. I guess that once we answer that, we could add that restroom to that shelter. That'd be pretty nice. I think I think the restroom is important over there. But we've heard that for years. Right. Yeah, it's something I forgot. And if if we're not going to do a restroom down there, I'd almost do away with the shelter. And you wouldn't worry about right. the parking like you do in, in concept two, where you yeah, two is eliminated. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that sounds good. I don't know. It's just just a no. That's good. I, well, I'm I glad you guys pointed that out. We should add a restroom if we're gonna, you know, if we're gonna keep that yes. right, shelter down there. Yes. 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 Yeah. But if we're not, well, then we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see what we do. Okay. That's all I had. Trish, I have, I have a question. Do we do we rent that shelter out a lot, the big shelter? Is that still real popular? Large shelter? The large shelter? Yeah, that goes fast. It, it, is much it much every much weekend, much is it? Every oh, okay, all right. Thank you. Number two. And Trish, those oh. are some of the comments you get on that <clears throat> small shelter to the east, right, about no restroom, right? Isn't that a lot of the comments um, you get? The no restroom <clears throat> for accessibility for parking. Parking, yep, no parking, yep. Hey, let me, can I interrupt again? Sorry, guys. Ray, I'd really like to fight for that parking lot. It, I don't know how much say we've got in it, but. I made note of that to get us an answer. And... Is that a state highway? It is, right? That's going to be a little problematic, probably, but. Um... Again, the one way might help. One way, keeping it away from the intersection. Yeah, might. yeah. Do you in and out on right. one. That's that's a good idea. It's a good thought. And the parking lot even could even be shifted down, maybe even a little bit more of it. Yeah, happens. yeah, it could. Away from the intersection. We thought it was a one in and a one out. Really, it's only fourteen cars yeah. max. That being that close, they could sneak out and you know wait for the traffic to go by and sneak out. Versus having in and out, sometimes that's tougher because of the left turn lanes and stuff. Yeah, there's. A yeah, we can uh, we can roll on that any way we want. So, Jeff, I don't I don't think Ohio is a state highway. South Park would be because that. Okay, be I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, it goes down Ohio, 44 cuts around the corner right there. It oh, it does. It doesn't go down to Maine. Oh, okay. I thought it was, but um, well, you guys are right. We'll find out. Okay. We'll get that figured out. All right. Should we get on with two? All right. All right. This is kind of more of the same. Um, you know, you try to be creative and come up with other ideas, but once you're starting to say, hey, I like the lagoons, I like the tennis courts, you know, there's not a lot of changes to look at. Um, you know, we did keep the loop in this one, but we changed the roadway a little more. It might be a little more expensive changing the roadway slightly the way we did, but it actually creates a really nice inner space. And um, we actually moved the large shelter from where it is to the uh, west a little further and created a large parking lot um, right in the middle. And I'm kind of going off my script here. Sorry, I was supposed to start up in the corner. I got excited with the plan. What's the difference in parking between concept one and concept two? We have 110 and two and 125 and one. So pretty close to the same. Um, I just can't read that parking lot there. Fifty-six spaces is a large lot. Here's the uh, Universal Playground again. We kind of put a pentagonal 
walk around it versus the circle. Um, we added more area to the um, to the splash pad, which is kind of cool. We kept the basketball courts. It's starting to get a little tight in here, but again, with some of these bigger bends in the uh, access road, we have more green space. We actually added a shelter um, right in the middle, as well as a as a as a shelter here. So there's actually three shelters and a restroom around the uh, playground area. Okay, that new shelter will not have a restroom like the one in Plan One. This one does not. Okay. There's a restroom building solo over here, Bill. Right. And then the three shelters That's around. The same way in one. With the with the restroom, but in in one you've got another restroom over by the Correct. playground and Correct. Yeah, we just we don't know how many restrooms you need. Um, this one only shows one at this time, which is probably a little light. Now you notice the shelter went away from the east side. Number three, we kind of tucked it up here between the um, tennis courts and the um, horseshoe area. So the relocated shelter ended up there. Uh, we also looked at potentially putting it here as well. Um, it was a little tighter, but closer to the lagoon. So we tried to relocate that a little closer so the restrooms were a little closer. But there would be quite a bit of parking for all those shelters right in this loop system here. The upper left part of the park has sand volleyball courts and a, and a new open shelter up there. And also we tucked in some parking and actually added some more uh, wooded area next to those existing large trees to try to buffer the neighbors there a little bit. Jeff, could you get a, the basketball court up there by the volleyball court? Yeah, it would fit. And that would take it take it out of that congested area. Yeah, you'd have a lot more space there. Maybe you could add a restroom, or, or you know, put a restroom on the middle one there again. I just don't know how many restrooms you guys think you need. I would think if this was full, you'd probably need more than just the one restroom building. Um, so I'd either add one to the middle or to the new shelter wherever it goes here or there. But then you have to cross the street. That's the only part with that. What kind of cost are we looking at expanding the additional, or the expanding the uh, retention pond there? I don't have a cost at this point. Um, you know, we're going to be dredging the existing lagoons anyways, so at that time... It'd be pretty easy to hog out some more material. Um, you know, depending where we need to take the material, um, that's a question. But there would be some cost for it. I, I don't know exactly. And that, that might be a stormwater cost too, perhaps, right. as opposed to a... We're just trying to create a little more volume of storage there and um, for cleaning of the water. So um, it could also be tucked up in here was one of the other ideas. Instead of having this narrow spillway, we would just keep it within this loop of sidewalk and expand the pond down in this, this area here. If it's necessary for what it's worth, I, I would like to see that happen and keep the parking lot. I mean, it, you know, I think we got the best of both worlds then. If you could move, move that, if, if it's necessary, you know, if, if, if stormwater determines that they need that you know move it to that area and keep our parking lot okay parking lot and shelter because right now the shelter right gone. right it, it both actually yes yeah. right this one adds more to this to the splash pad i don't know that's again that's a long range thing but it does seem popular and i don't know what you guys think of that expanding the splash pad chad uh splash pad you, that's i, I I think it would be a neat thing to have there. It's heavily used by people okay. through the summer. Right. That's, yes. that's what I'd like to hear. All right, heavily used, okay. Do we have room to expand the splash pad under concept one? Yeah, potentially. Um, it's pretty tight there. But we could move some things around. Um, 
We could go in the easterly direction with it. Wasn't concept one actually less there than concept two? Less, uh, I, I mean, just the existing splash pad, yeah, on, ex on number one. No expansion. But, but we certainly could expand. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. We could go to the east if that's something you guys favor. Well, I'll let you guys chew on those a little bit. Um, I just want to go through some of these other things. Um, Stormwater was a big concern. <coughs> and I don't know if you guys got this one in your packet or not. Um, I don't think so. Okay. There is a board on the floor there. Um, you probably can't read it. But I'll try to walk you through this. This came after, I think, your submittal. We weren't quite done with it yet. So there's some things we want to do with the existing ponds that are out there, you guys. Um, we want to maintain the water quality in the ponds if the quarry source is eliminated. There's been talk that maybe someday the quarry won't feed the... Feed the um, I think it's 1.5 million gallons a day or something like that. Some ridiculous amount of water that's, you know, really good cold water, which keeps the water pretty decent, to be honest. But what, we, what we're thinking about doing is that wherever the storm, water, storm sewer comes into the park now, we want to create sediment four bays, and that's like low points right where the water comes out, so the sediment sinks down deeper right away versus getting flowed all the way down. And those also have to be um, maintained regularly to, to keep that suspended solid area working. We also want to consolidate some of the storm sewers that are around the area to create new um, major outfalls into these sediments because right now there's a bunch of lines all over. We think maybe if we can combine them into one, we can control that sediment a little better. We want to dredge the ponds to achieve a depth of um, five this um four to five feet with seven to ten foot maximum depths. So around five foot depth of a pond would be good. Five to six again with some maybe deeper holes if there's room to do that. And then we want to provide supplemental groundwater from a new high capacity well if the if the quarry water goes away. There's a lot of angles with that because if, if that would be, um, who knows who's going to buy that first of all. If uh, for some reason the city might want to buy it for stormwater detention or whatever, the well could keep going. You know, there could be some agreement with that or with the new owner of the quarry. But if, if let's say the quarry goes away and the water source goes away, we think you should put a new well in, a high-capacity well. Now, we're not saying you'd have to pump as much water as they are every day, right? But we want to make sure that we get enough fresh water in there to really prevent those algae blooms from happening. So basically, in August, just don't turn off the pump and leave it turn green. We want to keep some fresh water going in there to keep it going. So there'd have to be a study with that. And then we'd like to create some of these, you know, maybe not that, but something fun because it's a beautiful park when you go by, in my opinion. I think something uh, vertically would be kind of cool. The DNR is coming around more to um, allow those to happen as long as they suck the water from the top. If you suck the water from the bottom, it stirs up all that dirt, and that's what they want us to prevent. Excuse me. All right. I'm trying to move along quickly. Improve suspended solid removal. Okay, we talked about that. Increase the detention capacity within South Park. Lower the permanent pool elevation of all the pools 12 to 18 inches. So when we dig it out, we're thinking maybe we can lower the water height of the pond by a foot. Okay, that would give us more storage above on these storms. We would gain a foot of storage in that area. Now all this has to be gone through with the um, engineering department, but our engineers have brought these bullets up, and we're going to meet down meet with them. We also thought if you raise the outlet weir down uh, the downstream pond, where it controls the water on the downstream area, and raised it, we could uh, create more storage there as well. Yeah, sorry. Can you guys read that? I can't read that. But uh. 
So I'm on number three. And then perhaps with some of this material we're dredging out, um, not only fix the shoreline, but install and regrade a perimeter berm, potentially to create some um, direction of which way the water uh, floods during the flood time. And then finally, manage uh, suspended solids from all new parking and hard surfaces. So all this new parking we're talking about, whatever's in excess of what's there now is blacktop or concrete. We need to control and remove the solids from it. So we might have to do some rain gardens within the park or build the new capacity into the lagoons when we rebuild them. So you know what I mean? Let's say we, let's say we had no lagoons here and we added all this parking lot, we'd have to create some new ponds or new treatment facilities to make that happen. So what we're saying is either we're going to do that between the parking lot and the lagoons or we're going to make the lagoons a little bigger to take that new parking area. All right? So that's everything you wanted to know about stormwater. But um, our engineers are looking at it. We're going to meet with James Robbie and the group and talk about some of these options. It's my understanding, I think they're hiring someone, a um, firm, to look at this entire watershed. And I don't know if that's been selected yet or not. But I, I, we had a couple of consultants call us knowing that we were working on this and they were trying to uh, provide proposals on that. And then one other big thing of the park is the shoreline stabilization. Um, was that one in there? Probably not, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What was that in your packet or no? Yeah. Yeah, we got that, one. that was kind of a neat thing Rebecca put together. I still don't know how she got the water on top, but it's kind of cool. But the first one shows um, how it looks existing um, with the scouring that's starting to happen in that edge of the, you know, along all the edges of the pond. It's really starting to erode. And some have said it's really even receded 10 to 12 feet from where it was before. So that's why these ponds are only three, three to two feet deep because I think a lot of that material got washed in the middle of the pond. I have no idea what these lagoons were when they were built. Does anybody know how deep they were at one time? Because they're shallow right now. They're really shallow. So um, there's a couple different ways to treat these edges. And the first one is we just say grass. But basically you'd put some new fill and turf reinforcement mat along the area, and you'd reseed the grass or resod the grass of natural grass and keep the existing look the way it is. It's kind of cool. It looks like an estate where the grass goes down to the water. There would be a little bit of riprap at the edges, and then we'd have to have some safety shelves. The next one's more of the Menominee discussion that we had at length, I guess, over there about naturalized landscaping that some people loved and some didn't. There's always that option to do that in pockets. Sorry I brought it up, but it's, it's here as an option. And it's the same, instead of using seed, we'd use the naturalized. And I think that's still out for debate, right? The other one's going to be checked in a couple of years or something. Right. I don't know how I can turn, page this thing down here. There we go, I got it. So we have naturalized, we have grass, we have the old riprap that looks like crap, kind of. You could imagine all stone out there all the way around the entire park. I think that'd be pretty harsh to have riprap along. It is, you know, somewhat affordable, but it is more expensive than the top two options. There's a new thing that's going on, and I think Ray's used this in other, in other um, parks, are these um, sediment logs that they actually lay within these scoured areas, and then you can seed over the top. It's similar to what we did with the matting up on top, but this is more of a pre-manufactured log that can be seeded and, and um, put on the edges and make it look natural. Or, or turf grass. And then the last one's kind of cool. Um, I've been to parks down in the Milwaukee area where there's actually limestone that goes into the lagoons. They're almost like big steppers. And I know down in Chilton and Fond du Lac, they cut these out of the quarry. In some of those overlook areas that we proposed along the, the edges of the pond, we thought, or the lagoons, we thought it'd be cool to have these steps of these different like maybe a 15-foot area by 15-foot deep and then stepping down into the water where people could just sit there, watch the water, fish, and with the fluctuation of the water, it wouldn't erode because they're big and heavy. Um, they're about 20 grand per section, so depending, you could build one at a time and see how they are and then have some of the grasses or, 
either naturalize or, na or uh, bluegrass blend into that. We think it would be a really cool area for kids to kind of hang out on and be safe and um, go with that. So out of all these, the most expensive one, riprap and the logs are about the same price. The logs are a little bit cheaper, about 35 bucks a foot. Um, the, just the natural, or the way it is today, look, with being filled back in is about 25 bucks a foot. There's around 3,500 lineal feet of lagoon right now. So that adds up to, you know, a couple hundred grand or something like that for fixing, which isn't over, overly bad. Now, we're assuming, though, that that doesn't include taking out the, the dredging and using that as the fill for the edges. Now, that's a different price. But just to put this application in, 35 bucks a foot's about the right number. So we didn't know which one you, you, wanted, you liked or do you like the way it looks now? Do you like those steppers as far as overlooks or... Um, any comment on any of it? Uh, I don't know if Bill or Chad. Uh, looking at the the edging, which would you would do you think would be more practical? The log, or are we going to uh, just grass, or yeah, the log and the grass one are about the same. So they're about the same. Yeah. On the on the uh, steppers, uh, Jeff. Were you kind of just thinking about having certain areas? Yeah, like a 15 by 15 foot area only. Fishing. Yeah, and on the on the plans you'll see, um, on the plans you'll see little white uh, rectangles around. It's hard to see, but there's little white rectangles. Basically, a 15 foot patio, if you would. Okay, so those are kind of access points for yeah. fishing or. Those would be special. Yeah, maybe three per lagoon or something. And then, and then you work back in. <clears throat> then you do one of the other options. The yeah. Balance of the yeah, either rip wrap or grass, the way it is now, or naturalized. That's really where we're coming from. Or a combination. Maybe around the edges of the big stones, we do some natural, and then we transition back to grass. Um, you know, it could be kind of cool, cool little space. I think the combination is a big thing based on the area and the use of what it does through there. I think they all have a place uh, through there. As far as maintenance-wise, um, I got questions on the limestone blocks to how much, if that was up in a high-end area or a high flow rate area, if there's going to be undercut or have problems for us in the long run or something of that nature. But um, I think they all have a fitting area where they could be used. So that's just my opinion. I think the only thing that comes back to it is uh, I think some of Menominee too. If you know, are we going to run into a goose problem in time down there? Uh, that's one thing to consider too when we're looking at the shorelines. There is a goose problem. But they, the, the that's one thing we didn't really address on this plan. Um, sorry, I don't know what the, the future holds with that. But again, if you use taller grasses, that will keep the geese down. But then. You have that look to it too. So, um, I don't know, goose, this geese, uh, goose problem is a big deal, but um, I don't know if there's any plans for that or not. Well, and what we're finding in the parks that we can control the numbers, um, we're able to do that. Menominee Park, Rainbow, the golf course. Um, when we're working with the USDA um, during June and July, when we take care of that process, South Park doesn't seem to have that issue, and those are the, the resident geese that we're trying to um, get rid of. So a lot of the geese here are going to be the migrants. Um, I think this park has a big issue with people feeding the geese, so I think it's an, an issue where we need to work better with the police department and educate people that the geese and the ducks aren't a favorite in the park and some of the droppings. So I think there's some education that needs to go along. But as Jeff said, you know, there's the people out there that say longer grass, longer um, flowers or whatever it may be along the shoreline and, and the geese aren't in there as much either so you, know, you can use decoys they only work so long again dogs you don't have dogs in your park um, I think in De Pere, they where they do allow dogs they give them permits to have the dogs chase the geese out um, stuff like that that's a whole nother issue yeah right now I think we need to as a board come into some type of agreement with plan one plan two or combination of both uh, so board, uh, what do we got? Or just give us your, what you like about. 
right, guess Bill. I'll I'll lead it off. I really like Plan One with with a couple you know modified changes. If we could increase the splash pad um, and and move you, you know and, and if we need bigger storm water, we, we've certainly got an area for it there. Um, but I, I I think Plan One incorporates everything, and it's a little bit cheaper than moving. Um, that moving our, our U drive around a little bit there, which I think it's very pricey. Yeah, I, would be. I don't know what we benefit from it, quite honestly. <clears throat> so what you're saying then is, look at number one. <coughs> what about the the two basketball courts? Would you have the two up there? Or would you go I, one to sand I, volleyball? I. I you know, I, I'm very open for that, but I know those basketball courts are always getting used, and to keep them all closer to the road where they can be a little more supervised, I think is great thinking. So, so you're thinking the two basketball courts and not a sand volleyball like a, that's on yes. Two? You could put a volleyball over here. Right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go into the center section. You know, the main. The, inside the loop. Jeff, can, yep. I, can I add one thing with the volleyball court too to maybe just include in the concept a sidewalk around the perimeter of yeah. the container? Keep the sand in there. Nice. What about inside? Uh, if we go with one, we got that shelter down on the east and we'd want a restroom down yeah, there. Absolutely. Yeah. Would we just move one of the restrooms that's in the main corridor? And still just have the two restrooms in that park, but one down by the shelter, and then a, a maybe have that not where the existing one is, but down where you propose the new one, closer to the new playground. You know, if we wanted to just go with two, because like you said, Jeff, you know, three could be an overkill. How many how many restrooms do we need in that park? Bill, I, I agree with that. I just, I agree with that. I think the two, trying to find two, I think would be really good. And having one in that area, I think would be good. I, the only thing is, could it be located where people that use a shelter, which are, is a main use too, doesn't have to go through all the playground stuff to get to it? Yeah, yeah, I think you almost. If it could be located maybe north of that shelter, but close to the playground somewhere, if somehow that could be tweaked, you know, so that. They're not always having to go through the playground to, to get to the... Otherwise, you could have two in the loop, but just have a real small one for the universal playground, kind of. What, what would the cost of something like that be? A small one? Yeah. I don't know, uh, 40, 40,000 maybe. I mean, three is nice, but I mean, you're always trying to keep costs down. You know, I, mean, I, I know we have a universal playground, and we have just a one staller that's kind of a family one. It's real big. Because sometimes they have to change their clothes or whatever, but um, it really works well having that and another one, because you know that there's going to be a lot of kids on that universal right. playground. There's going to be schools coming out there, and um, you know, I think you're going to need those two plus maybe the other one. Unfortunately, you just think because of the activity of the kids. And I kind of do, Bill. You know, maybe just a smaller one in the middle. Keep the big one, smaller one, and then another one in okay. three. All right. All right. So I know three is maybe more, but... Um, so down on the east side, probably going to be a little pricey because of all, all the running, the plumbing and... Yeah. I think sanitary is down there, though, already. So uh, um, yeah, I think sanitary is close to there already. So Okay, so it won't be that bad. I believe, yeah. Okay, so... Is everybody pretty happy with the inside the loop? Yeah. I just have one question, Jeff. Could you could you kind of go over? I like keeping the existing shelter. Could you just explain maybe what would possibly be renovated on the shelter, on the big one? In the one? Yeah. Concept, yeah. Like what would you uh, have a general idea of probably what would we? Because the roof was new on there, right? Just a few years ago? Shape, I think, when we looked at yeah. it. Did we just put a new roof on there a few years ago? Yeah, about but the foundation was starting to crack. The floor was cracking up, right? I was um, just at a wedding last year. It's it's rough inside. Yeah, I mean, the inside surfaces are real rough. Windows. Yeah. So I mean, how much do you keep? You know, if the if the roof's in good shape, um, 
Is that the only thing you keep or the whole? I guess we're going we're gonna to evaluate that a little closer. Okay. All right. I'll have an architect actually look at it, and we'll come up with some budgets. But Whether it makes sense to keep Right, you know what I mean? Because okay. uh, maybe we want to add something else in that shelter, and it gets to be a little different shape or something. Or. Okay, um, going back to inside the loop. So uh, we're going to expand the uh, splash Flash. pad. Yep. Got that note down, Jeff? Yep. Uh, Everything else inside the loop is looking good. Should we add that much more parking um, in the frontage there? Is, is that a good thing? I, I think parking there is huge. Yep. Right up uh, off of Georgia? Yep. If there's a wedding or something there, you yeah. you, you got to park three blocks away. Yeah, so that would that be important. And if they have the, they've got a lot of shows going on in there. Yeah. Always are looking for parking. Right. So, yeah, I think that'd be a good thing. And it gives them, if it's an expanded roll, they've got asphalt, if they have to set some stuff up too, right? Yep. So, I mean, that part would be really good for certain events too, right, Trish? Okay. Um, so the inside we're good on, that inside the loop. Yep. Okay, the bridge, you want to go with that plaza for seating. I know that there's a lot of weddings that take pictures there and everything else. And what are your thoughts on that? I think it looks good. Oh, okay. Uh, what are the other changes would be? Do you like those little, those little patios or fishing areas around the lagoons? Is that? Are you preferred? talking the limestone? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Oh, absolutely. Those are gorgeous. What were you talking? Yeah. Those are what? 20,000 bucks a piece? Or? For each area, yeah. Six of them, Sean. Yeah, yeah it adds up. Yeah. Potentially, you could do Start just only two or, one or two. That's if you hire a landscaper. You know, I don't know. Once... D depending, depending if you dredge one pond at a time, because that's going to be costly too. Maybe you just do the ones you dredge because it'll be the water will be down, be easier to do it. Uh, the, the the crews could do it even. One um, question so. with that too, just in reference, brother, is this is that going to require DNR permitting every time to put one in along the shore of that? You know, I don't know. Once we dredge it, I don't know. Maybe we'll probably have to get a dredging permit anyway. So. Everything needs to be permitted, so we'll get a permit for that. Bill, so one question I comment I have for the restrooms too, and I've done this in other municipalities or other areas too. Some shelters that include a restroom in them don't necessarily have to be open all the time for general park use. When there's just one park facility open during a, a normal weekday thing, but if there's a rental coming in when they come pick their keys, they'd have access to that restroom during their event too. There's something; those things can be incorporated into a shelter renovation too. From a small end, might be something to consider with shelter three or shelter one uh, per se. Then you still have your general park restroom down by the playground open all the time too from a maintenance perspective in a <coughs> practical standpoint. Well, I just thought as long as we're going to keep, if we're going to keep that shelter on the east side, you know, we do need a restroom down yeah. there. So, uh, okay, what well, other thing moving, I guess, towards Ohio, I guess the basketball or the tennis courts are, are fine where we're at. Yeah. And they talked about the horseshoe pits and everything. Uh, going towards that, the east there, towards Ohio then. Uh, I agree with, with Bill on uh, if we need to expand <coughs> those ponds, go more towards <coughs> towards the loop and to go towards the west instead of to the east, and we could still keep that shelter. Sounds good. I'm tracking you. I know what you mean about that. Okay. Uh, if we would do that, it looks like, on plan two that we would lose probably a lot of trees if we would do plan two and the other way we probably wouldn't lose as many probably right yep i know that probably makes some people happy that park is pretty nice with all the trees that they have in there and i'd hate to see a lot of that gone but i would like to see that pond expanded if we could So what we can do is we'll take some of these ideas and, and develop a new plan. It'll be a little more finite. We're going to meet with the engineering department. We'll figure out the parking. Now, I guess if we can't get parking off of Ohio, then we're going to have to add a, a shelter. So it would either be south of the tennis courts probably or north of the tennis courts um, or potentially over in this area, but um, probably more so in the middle. 
I don't know if there's any preference on that, you guys. Uh, let's say, say they, we can't get that parking lot off of that road. Um, should we add the shelter south of the tennis courts or north? Whichever one is probably more secluded. I think people might want it away from the action a little yeah, bit. So yeah. I agree with that one. Okay. Yeah. But but let's not let's not throw in the towel on this parking. No, I mean that's to me Yeah, to me, I mean on the whole South Park plan, that was to me was one of the major things that I was hoping we could accomplish was to to finally get a restroom and parking over there. So I think it's important we try to pursue that and you know, it's a big park. You know, it, it's a it's a long park, ways away, and yeah. it's a long ways away, and it's underutilized. Really, to have a big park like that and not, you know, have a shelter probably over there somewhere is. Yeah, if you're not going to have, a we've shelter, heard that over and over from so many people over the years. Right. You know that. Yeah, if you're not going to have a shelter down there, then, then yeah, you expand to your pond that way, but well, then you're going to take down a few trees. So, yeah, that's going to play play a big part. So, anything else? Any other comments? And so we talked about the sand volleyball then, right? Over up in, right, okay, good. Any feedback from staff? Do you, do you like what you're seeing with this? Yeah, um, as I said, Jeff and I reviewed both of these. There were certain things in each plan that we liked, and that's why we brought it to you as this way and say, give us your feedback, and what can you meld into one? So. Um, I think the splash pad is a big, big area that we need to contend with. I think the restroom near the accessible playground is something that needs to be done. As Jeff said in his experience at Stevens Point, in my experience at Oconomowoc, they had to build a restroom afterwards because it's so heavily used. So okay. um, I think you're really going to see that being a hub of activity. So, you and think I, these uh, shade, excuse me, Ray, these shade shelters are a maintenance headache or a good idea? Or I think they're a neat concept to have. Okay, I, I definitely yeah. do. Makes it look festive, you know, and yeah. but you have to take them down, you know, right in the winter. But uh, the not, framing, not framing always. stays I mean, okay. Not always, but okay. Uh, depends on the situation. The product, I guess. Uh, okay. I was thinking of the one where you just take the shade off and then. Very practical, though, having shade there. Isn't Plus, it's, it looks kind of fun, you know. It'll really jazz the place up for a low low cost. Sorry. No, that's okay. If, <laughs> once we get done with coming up with this um, this melded plan, I guess I'm more concerned or um, curious on what the board feels on the shoreline <coughs> stabilization options. So, um, you know. Okay. Well, are we pretty well set on combining one from? I think I heard everything you guys were talking about. Um, okay. And we can make those changes. Um, and again, I think there will be some tweaks once we meet with engineering. And uh, you know, just other tweaks once we start laying out uh, these new, new ideas. So, okay, then, then then that'll take us to the shoreline. And what are your comments on that board? I think aesthetically, I think the grass probably looks the best and is easiest to maintain. Chad, uh, like I said, everything has its pros and cons. <coughs> I mean, we spend a lot of time trimming the shoreline through there throughout the course of the summer. It's not an area you can treat. That's the challenge. So you are doing it by hand for the most part. Um, if I had to break it down in sections, for example, knowing what special events we have down there and working, when you look at the, the main lagoon at the corner of Georgia and South Park, you know, people will set up around that trail and they're down to that stone bridge for a lot of stuff where as you head towards the east, other uh, areas are a little less impact with people and pedestrian traffic. You know, they'll set booths up, do things in there, more of a higher active zone. So I guess in my comment before about how do you incorporate the different areas, I think each of the concepts have a, a, a fitting location along the lagoon's sequence of events through there, or sequence of the layout. I just uh, I think it could all blend really nice. Yeah, especially down on that very east side, the main spillway, I think a naturalized makes a lot of sense in there. Um, there'll be a lot of undulation of water there and stuff. And I guess, Bill, I'd like your... Comments on that because you've worked so closely with the Miller's Bay group on yeah, on those I items. actually um, I think agree with Chad because I, I believe that you know in those higher use areas probably the most you know dependable treatment is going to be the grass um, You know up to that, that shoreline area because it's going to receive a lot more heavy traffic mm -hmm. But I believe that as you proceed east into some of those other ponds We've we've got more of a naturalized setting there. You know, it's it's lower impact you know, I think 
um, in some of those areas, I would be open to some of the limestone, you know, um, escarpment type setups for fishing or just, you know, access out closer to the water might be good. <clears throat> and then in combination, also some of the naturalized, um, you know, areas as well. Um, I think a lot of it depends on what your what your gradient is going to you know wind up being once you excavate those ponds. You know I think you, you may not have that tapered shoreline that is depicted in the drawings. It it may be a little more correct you know, yeah. vertical there because you only have so much area to work with. We were thinking that we would try to maybe go a little further into the park and regrade that side slope sure. if we could. I think but, um, there's, you know, given the existing trees, right, you know, right. you're going to have it's really tough. little areas yep. that you can, yep. you can effectively do that without disturbing any of the, the vegetation that you want to preserve. So, you know, I don't think you can just say, yeah, this whole pond is going to be like... Right, I agree, I think I agree. you just have to look for certain zones where it's going to be um, opportune and, and work with that. But I, I like all these different treatment options, I think. You know, certain areas, you know, on the west portion of it where you do want, you know, lawn right up, I think you're going to have to work with the core log a bit, too, you know, just to, to you know, have that vertical drop sure. off where it becomes deeper. Sure. I think what we should do, Jeff, for the plan is um, maybe in the, the written document state the options that the park board and staff favor and not sure. really show it on the plan. I okay. Don't, I don't want to pin us into a whole yeah. thing. We're going to do naturalized here. So we'll just things, we'll we'll put notes on the plans that, that we're going to stabilize the shoreline and then have the options the in the different book. Different options, yeah. Because, you know, if I take a look at the, the vegetated core log, a lot of times you're going to be putting in naturalized plantings into that log because that log dis disintegrates. Right. And what the intent is is the roots Let's the take over. Yeah. Take over. So yeah. there's some different combinations that that we as staff, once we get into that, would be able to take a look at it and say, here's what we suggest for this area. So I think leave it off the maps, but maybe incorporate the verbiage into the Sounds good. plan. With the naturalized uh, turf, how tall is that stuff? This one we proposed real low, obviously, but uh, uh, Bill, I don't know if you have any opinions, but three feet or less would There's be good. a lot of different options. I think we want the six foot tall stuff or whatever, right? Menominee well, Park is tall. getting pretty tall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very tall. We don't want to end up back there. Unless you get into different on, sedges or something. Like that. Years, yeah. So I think we hear, Bill, what they're saying, right? Maybe a, some lower. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's, there's you know, options for any, right. any sort of, you know. But three feet or lower would probably be better. A lot of it is going to be driven by the excavation plan. Yeah. Water, those sides are going to get a lot steeper. Sure. Right. So, you know, granted that there's there's a lot of options with you know, you know, submerse submerse plants as well too that wouldn't necessarily be <coughs> right. Perfect. That's the only one out. Yes, sir. Uh, as far as the choices that were given here, I, I personally would like to see predominantly grass and the, the core logs. Um, and, and I'd like to see a few limestone blocks mixed in as we talked and little or none of the riprap or naturalized would be my preference. Well, that I think, you know, like uh, uh, Ray said, we can get that, you know, at a future time on what we want and where we want it. So right now, Jeff's got what you need, right? Correct. Jeff, on some of the outfalls, though, I thought you had mentioned you probably want to put a riprap around the pipes. Is that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think what we're saying is <coughs> obviously the riprap where you've got where you got to do it. Big flows, yeah. But, but I agree. I, I, don't, I don't want to see any riprap. I mean, it just you look like you're in an industrial. Yeah, it'd be pretty monotonous, yeah. yeah. But yeah, on big scouring areas or big golf flaws, right. we're going to have limestone there. You know. Okay, any other discussion? I Rick? Think we're going to have a study on the cost of that high capacity pump, what that's going to cost us over, say, a year's time or six months' time. Yeah, the big investments of drilling it. We oh, don't know that, but the operating cost, that's going to be constant. 
Yeah, it's um, we'll 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 get that, but it's usually uh, it's not too bad in the big picture <laughs> because we do a lot of these high capacity wells for large golf courses or athletic fields, you know, and um, the initial cost is what kills you more than anything. Hey, anybody else? Okay, Jeff. Thank you. Another project. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Moving right along. Moving right along. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is the update on the 2014 budget. I know it's someplace in the packet here. Ray? No, it's not in here. Um, the budget's more of a, just a report, Bill. Okay. As part of our um, budget submission to the city manager, each department was requested to come up with um, a percentage in potential cuts um, because as everybody knows, budgets have been getting tighter and um, a larger portion is being taken up by um, salaries and benefits and so forth. And one of the positions that um, as we took a look at the park side, each, each of our divisions had to come up with 5% um, uh, potential reduction and as Chad was working through the park side of it, that estimated um, or e equalized about $80,000. Um, when we started to try to nickel and dime our, our line items, it really got to be a matter of we're not keeping up with where we need to be right now as far as maintenance and repair. So we felt that um, taking anything out of those areas was not going to be good for the parks. At the same time, when we started to look at personnel, we know that we don't have enough personnel. Um, however, um, in light of that, we did have one position or a, a full-time trades tech that was retiring at the end of the year. He did make us aware of that, and that was with pay and benefits um, just about that $80,000, coincidentally. Um, again, we offered it up in hopes that uh, city manager and the, and the council would find other ways to uh, make their decisions and their cuts, um, but they had a number of tough decisions to make. So we ultimately lost a full-time parks trades technician which for us means um, a gentleman who's normally out there on a route plowing snow, cutting grass, um, helping us do park projects, a lot of the things that are in our corp that we can do in-house, building new structures, um, maintaining what we currently have. So with that loss, we have our other staff members who have to pick up some additional mowing and some additional plowing. Uh, but the biggest thing I think that um, you'll see is those will not be done as quite as regular because if we had somebody who was responsible for a route, mowing every five to seven days. It's going to take us longer to get there or the grass might be getting longer or some of the in-house projects that we had planned through our comprehensive plan may get pushed back as we uh, move forward. So again, it was, I know, a hard decision on our part because we felt that um, the materials and supplies, the other things that we have in our budget, we needed to um, keep a status quo and we just couldn't nickel and dime any other areas. So unfortunately, we did lose a full-time position to help generate some additional revenue through the parks. The number of fees that this board took a look at were approved. So the park rental fees that were suggested were approved. So we are going away from the four hour increments. It'll be full days um, with weekends and holidays having a higher fee than the, uh, the standard weekdays and non-residents, um, the, the fees that uh, were recommended by this board were approved as well. The boat launch fees, were, that were recommended by the board were approved. Those started taking effect on January 1 already. And then all the golf course fees were also recommended. And so all the fees have gone into effect um, as of January 1 of this year. So those were the big items in the, the operating budget. If, I don't know if there's any questions, anybody that might have watched the budget deliberations. Uh, but those were the biggest things that affected our department. I did want to go through, I made a couple of highlights of some projects that we'll be working on throughout the various divisions. Um, on Bill's, the forestry budget, um, the biggest thing will be um, we'll taking a look at the emerald ash borer, some mitigation. I know Bill has been working on that with his staff, um, evaluating some of the um, ash trees that may be treatable 
and included in the at, in Bill's forestry budget was twenty thousand dollars to help him either do some contracted removals of some of the um, ash trees in the terrace and park areas, or to um, do some inac um, injections on some of those trees. So I'm sure Bill will be able to give you a report on that as we move forward. On some of the other areas. This is the revenue facility, so a lot of Jenny's areas. Um, Jenny is currently working on a, a department annual report. If you recall, we started this a little bit last year with having about a page summary from each division on what took place last year and what we're moving forward in 2014. Um, I've asked Jenny to do a complete report of all our divisions um, and all of our areas, including the revenue areas as, uh, and cemetery, forestry, all those areas. So you'll be seeing that. Uh, my guess is going to be it's going to be sometime in April. Once the auditors come through, we'll have some uh, better idea as far as the final budget numbers in all areas. But that's something I wanted to have uh, completed in a, a nice document that we can present to the board as well as the council. Um, we're also going to complete the renovation of the tie-up docks. We did a portion of those last winter. Um, the section by the Kiwanis Shelter, I know Chad has on the schedule to complete this winter. Uh, the zoo, Menominee Park Zoo Master Plan, uh, consulting services were included in the budget, so we'll be working on that, um, working with the Zoo Society as well as the Parks Board during the year. Due to a number of break-ins and um, security issues at Lake Fly Cafe, Jenny's office, the amusement office, and the zoo maintenance building, we are going to have some security cameras that will be installed, um, hopefully cut down on the number of vandalisms that take place. And then the design of the Rainbow Park boat launch improvements. We do have um, $50,000 budgeted to take on that project this year. Um, I'll kind of jump into the joint meeting that we had earlier this evening with the Redevelopment Authority. As you recall, um, Mr. Davis had uh, informed you that there's some grant funding that will not be able to be used at the Boatworks property because there's not a motorized um, boat facility going down there. So the DNR has said if we have other work that's going to take place on motorized facilities in the city, they're willing to shift those grant dollars. So it's about $222,000 that um, we did tell them that Rainbow Park we are designing this year and will hopefully be uh, potentially starting over the winter months or into 2015. Um, so we are hopeful that the DNR will transfer that grant funding over to the Rainbow Park projects. Um, so we'll continue to keep you updated on that. Um, at the pool, we have a number of things going on that uh, Jenny will be working on. She is, um, we're looking to replace the lockers that are stored outside. Um, they have, the, the ones that are out there are rusted, and we're looking at getting those replaced. Um, we're going to be purchasing additional deck chairs. That's one of the items that we always hear that we don't have enough deck chairs. Um, and Jenny's excited to purchase a new malt machine for the concession. She feels that a new machine up there will help her sell um, some new concessions and so forth. Um, at the golf course, a couple of items to note. Um, Steve is he's going to finish the expansion of the range tee. Um, Trace and him are, are, and Steve are hoping to add a senior division to the city tournament and grow entries to 180. Um, they're going to do some additional marketing to increase women and junior golf rounds and also work with the schools to increase junior rounds as well as UWO and Fox Valley Tech to increase the college age students that, that utilize the facility. Um, so those are some of the operating budget items I wanted to update you on and can take any questions. Otherwise, I just had some updates on the CIP. Um, capital improvement. I included in your document, um, this was the list that was prioritized by this board back in May of 13. I'll go right down the line. The 24th Avenue boat launch restroom updates for ADA um, were included in the 2014 budget. Port and place surfacing at Little Oshkosh and Sea Sand and Sailor Land um, was bumped back to 2015. Bowman Park play equipment and accessible route and perimeter, perimeter walk were included in 2014, and we hope to um, coordinate that project with the cleanup of um, the sediment bags and the, the dredging product that is down there. So we'll be working with some of the contractors to let them know um, we're looking to improve the ball diamond down there as well as um, get this equipment in. So. Yeah, see, there's still the, the bags are still there. They've got uh, one on Oshkosh app. West Algoma. West Algoma Park. They've got that cleaned up and yep. they laid sod and there was 
they're batting down, so that's pretty well cleaned up already. So. Yeah, I know Bowman Park, they were looking at going into early spring at this point yet. Okay. So. Um, Roe Park, we're going to start to replace those lights. If you recall, that was, that's been in our plan for a number of years to get rid of some of those old fiberglass poles. Uh, the golf course storage building was moved to 2016. Cemetery roads repaving, none in 2014, but uh, recommended for 2015. Taking root project, that was included in 2014. Stevens Park shelter restroom, um, what um, the council has approved is to begin designing that restroom in 2014. Um, with construction potentially in 2015. Where is that one located? Near the playground? Um, it'll be closer to the playground, so between the shelter and the playground, so it's a little more centrally located. Okay. All right. Um, repaving the asphalt pa path in William Steiger Park, uh, moved to 2015. West Algoma, the accessible route perimeter walk um, was included in 2014. Again, the Menominee Park Zoo Master Plan update in 2014, and then the design of the Rainbow Park um, boat launch area in 2014. There are some caveats to that above list. Um, the universally accessible playground, if you recall, the council, I think it was back in 2012, had committed $100,000 if the committee could raise a matching $100,000 before we could begin construction. Um, they're getting near that. They just recently were informed of another $25,000 donation. Um, I believe they're probably around $80,000 in donations. So um, what we had informed the council is if the inclusive playground is ready to be built, that, that $100,000, we would have to make adjustments to the list up above. So um, just a quick one, if, if they um, raise the $100,000 and we do construction in 2014 of that playground, the ADA accessible improvements at 24th Avenue boat launch may be pushed off for a year. Um, so we need to essentially come up with $100,000 in project savings from the, the top 12, 13 areas um, to fund that $100,000. So I'll keep you updated as I, on that project as well. Um, Tech Miller play equipment and the George Washington Monument areas, if you recall, those were funded with dollars from the uh, Great Neighborhoods Program and are in process. So. Again, looking at uh, the number of projects, I think we're uh, fairly happy with what we got included. And uh, uh, the majority of the funding obviously is going towards the, the central garage um, and the, uh, the uh, capacity for the, uh, the city to borrow is going into that project. So any questions? Very good. Okay, moving on to citizen statements. Seeing none, pass that off. I'm going to directors and staff report. Um, we just um, actually got a surprising phone call this morning. Mr. Roloff did that the Weather Channel is going to be in Oshkosh. Um, they're actually arriving at about 2.30 this tomorrow morning, and they're actually going to be doing some live broadcasting from Menominee Park from 4.30 until 11 a.m., um, so if you drive through or if you watch the Weather Channel, they're up in the Wisconsin area doing some um, discussions on the past storms and the cold weather that we're having in the Midwest. So um, shelter number two, which is our new shelter, we are making available for them to use for restrooms and a little warming area if they need it. Um, so keep that on your calendar and, and check it out. You, Oshkosh will be on some national weather stories. Um, I apologize for some of the items that are missing from the packet, or if you're getting it late, um, I'll work with Trish. We're going to get those out a little sooner, and it seems whether it's on our behalf or the, the mail getting out later, but we, these were mailed out on Thursday, so it surprises me if you didn't get them at home. Um, plus, I know she emails it to you, but um, we'll have to move up our mailing deadline and, and try to get those out a little bit earlier. And then in your packet, I did include an article from uh, one of the websites that was sent to me on accessible playgrounds and um, some of the poured in place surfacing um, items that um, that we've talked about in the past. So just a FYI. Um, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Bill, great. I just wanted to know, for my own information, how did that park discipline thing ever work out this past summer? Um, I, that's right, I didn't give you a report on that. Well, we haven't had any park evictions the last couple of months, and what we can do is we'll include that in the annual report. I think it worked out well. I think um, people that were some of the habitual offenders got the word once we did give them warnings. Um, I think as far as the number of people that were evicted, and I, I'll get you the firm number, but if it was at most six people, 
Some of those were repeat offenders, but I think um, out of everything, it was probably affected six people. Um, thanks, Vic, and, and we'll report on that. But we'll it, put something it, in. It, it does seem to be. It does seem to be. Merit. I mean, it does. We still have. Um, we do have some issues at I would say Red Arrow Park and Menominee Park yet that we continue to work on with the police department. But I think all in all, um, it's helped with a lot of the issues we were having in in some of those areas that we were hoping that it would. Good point, Vic. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Chad. Uh, I believe since the last time we met in October, um, uh, we've had a very eventful fo fall with all of our projects going forward and trying to end up uh, through the course of the year, even into December, as uh, weather cooperated. But uh, currently, uh, still finishing up some projects from past years, but uh, uh, from the past year, but working on snow removal now. Uh, we got an extensive list, as you saw, with the capital and pro projects going forward, plus some internal things within some of our facilities that we're working on. Uh, going forward, we're trying to strategize how we're going to get everything completed uh, before the season kicks in, uh, which is going to be challenging in itself. But uh, looking forward to that. Um, um, I'll have a, a more thorough update for you on some of that status and where we're going to go in kind of a timeline, hopefully, at our next meeting. But uh, it's been a good fall, fall and winter, and looking forward <coughs> to spring right now. So that's all I have. Questions for Chad? Okay, thank you, Chad. Next, uh, Bill. Okay, I don't have a lot to report, but I, I'll just kind of give you a brief status of uh, forestry operations. We're currently working on our winter pruning and uh, some removals. Um, uh, Ray mentioned earlier the emerald ash borer uh, situation, although we haven't uh, found it in the community yet. It's close. Um, we're looking at some preemptive removals of some of the ash trees that are in uh, otherwise poor health anyway. Um, we're, we're actually uh, going to uh, do some treatment of some of the better trees. Um, so it's, um, we're kind of taking a multi-tiered approach. So um, we're, we're actually going to demonstrate some equipment uh, uh, this Friday to, uh, you know, to, and have our crew trained in, in some of the uh, best practices and some of the treatment methods that are available to us. Um, also on that, uh, uh, we are going to uh, be going through our municipal code and doing some updates um, to specifically include insect and disease control, which isn't directly addressed in our current uh, ordinance. So um, the concern is that um, you know we will want to delimit some areas um, and try to prevent you know the disease or the insect rather from spreading. Um, so we will also look at uh, some of you know, how we are able to control that uh, on private property as well. So um, obviously with Dutch elm disease, we, we had an ordinance that specifically addressed that, that if um, there was a, a concern that uh, Dutch elm disease could spread um, throughout the community, we would be able to uh, go in and, and remove some of those trees that were um, obviously causing us the most dismay. So um, we'll keep you posted as that develops as well. Um, as Ray mentioned also, um, we are proceeding fairly well on the George Washington uh, landscape development. Um, uh, currently, Rettler is working on developing the bid specs and documents for that project, so um, we should be in good position to get that started here first thing in the spring. Um, also, it's, it's neat that the Weather Channel is going to be here. I think they're going to have an eventful day tomorrow from the forecast, so, uh, as will we. So. Um, <coughs> And that's all I have for now. Thanks. Okay. Any questions for Bill? <coughs> all right. Seeing none, uh, that concludes uh, staff reports. Uh, our next meeting is February 10th. I had to ask Jeff if he would have the South Park plan back to us by then, and he wasn't sure, but he'll let Ray know uh, if that's something we're going to be acting on. Uh, I don't think it's a, a big hurry-up thing, so uh, but I appreciate everybody's comments. I think we're I think he'll come up with a, with a decent shot at it. So uh, with that, I need a motion to adjourn by Vic, second by Bill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. <laughs>